Welcome back everyone. In this video we will build the header part of this portfolio and make a response. I have already created my React app and you can do so by writing create react app in your terminal. I have three files in here and deleted the files that I don't need them. Inside app.js I have a div and also inside my CSS file I have some general setup for the HTML page like font style and also I have stored some colors that we are going to use them in our project. And inside of the index.js there is a general setup made by React HTML. Now we need to install two libraries. The first one is style-component for our CSS. The second one is React icons for our icons. Once we are done with the installation, we need to write npm start to start our project in the browser. When the app is opened in the browser, we need to go back to our file and inside of the index.css, we need to give the body some width and also a background color of our stored color. Now, we need to set the all fonts color to white because we have a dark background. Okay, now it is time to start building our header. At first, we need to add a new folder inside my search and call that component. And then inside of that, we need to add another folder and I'm gonna call that banner. And also we need to add another folder and call that service for our service component. Inside of the banner, we need to have a file called header.jsx. Inside the header.jsx, I'm gonna generate my React code using React snippet. And now we need to change the div to our style-component tag and I'm gonna call that container and then call that container down here so we can add our styles later. Now inside my app.js, I need to add this style-component container again. And inside of that, we need to import our header component. Now we need to call that for our style. We need to go back to our header component and inside of the container, we need to add another div and call that logo and down here we need to call that logo again for the styling inside of this logo at first we need to have a span for the logo and we are gonna import that from the react icon and down the icon we need to add an h1 and right here portfolio for the logo icon we need to open the browser and look for react icons website inside of the react icons we need to look for the candle icon and now if i click the icon the code will be copied now we need to import that inside the header component then we need to add the icon inside of our span tag now we need to add another div and call that nav for our navigation bar inside of that we need to add a span tag inside of the span we need to have an href tag and write home inside of the href tag now we need to copy and paste it for five times and then change their name and then we need to call this nav div for our style we need to change the background color of this header inside of the app.js by adding another div tag and i'm gonna call that banner again and call this header inside of that banner div and then we need to call that banner down here and add this color to it once we are done with the header background we need to separate the logo from the nav so we need to go back to our header component and write display flex align item and justify content to space between. And also we need to give it a width of 80% and write margin zero auto to put them in the center. 
Okay, now we need to get more spaces to the top and bottom. So we come back and write a padding of 1.5 frame for the top and bottom and 0 for left and right. Okay, now it is time to design the logo. So in the header component inside the logo div, we need to give it a display flex, align item center and a gap of 0.5 frame. It's looking good, but we need to increase the size of our candle and the text. So we grab the span tag first and give it a font size of 1.83 and this color code as the color. And for the H1 text, we need to give it a font width of 600 and a font size of 1.23. Now we are done with the logo, let's style the nav. Inside the nav tip, we need to grab the span tag and give it a margin left 100 to make a space between each nav and then grab the A tag and set the color to white. Text decoration to none and also give it a phone width of 400. As you can see, we have changed the color to white and separated them from each other. Okay, now we need to make line animation under each nav. So inside the span tag, we need to write a position to relative and then grab the span tag before pseudo element. First write content and position absolute. Then Give 0 to left and right and minus 5 pixel to the bottom. We give a height of 2 pixel and white background color. Now you can see we have this white border under each nav. But we need to animate them on hover. So I come back and give it a transform scale 0 and set the transform origin to left. Then gave it a transition to be animated smoothly. You can see the borders are gone now and we need to animate them using hover. So now we need to grab the hover and change the transform scale from 0 to 1 as well as change the transform origin from left to right. Now you can see the borders are animating smoothly and if you want to change the start and end point of this line, you can just change both transform origins. Okay, and now for the nav itself, we need to give an opacity of 0.7 on hover. Okay, so as we are gonna use this color for many times in this project, we don't need to write this color code manually. To make it simple, we need to have a class name and write the color under it. So whenever we need this color, we just write the class to our element. Let me show you what I mean. So I delete this color from here and inside the index.css, I just write a class and name that green and add this color to it. Now I just add this class name to my logo icon and get the green color. Now it is time to make our header responsive. So I open the developer tools. As you can see if I expand the page width, the header text will be very long. So to avoid this issue, I just give a maximum width to 1280 pixel. And now it is not moving more than 1280 pixels. Now we need to check the small size. On a small size, when the screen reads to 763 pixel, we want to give it a width of 90%. Now on nav, when the screen reads to 640 pixel, we want to apply our bars. 
So first we set the position to absolute, then display flex and flex direction to color to put them on top of each other. We change the background color to this color. Okay, now we need to bring them in the middle. So all we need to write is just keep zero to all sides and then justify content to center and align item to center as well. Now we need to increase the font size. So I write font size to rim, a gap of two rim to put a distance between each maps and a font weight of 700. Now it is time to hide the nav from the UI. So we can toggle between show and hide with the help of hamburger menu which we will implement later. So I just kept zero to the height of nav, but as you can see the text are still there. So we just need to write overflow heading to hide the text. Now our nav is high and we need to implement the hamburger menu. So we come back to the header component and add a div with the class of boss. And inside that, we need to have another div with the class of bar. In CSS part, I just copy the responsive part and change the width to 640 pixel. Then we need to grab the bars class and give it a width of 40 pixel, a height of 40 pixel, and a border of one pixel solid white. You can see we have this bars line in our header. Now it is time to implement the hamburger menu line. So I come back to header component and grab the bar class inside bars. We give it a position absolute and give a position related to its parent div which is bars so it shouldn't overflow it. Then we give it a width of 100%, a height of 2 pixel, and a background color of white. Now you can see we have our first line up there, but we need to bring it in the middle. So inside of the bars class, we need to use display flex, align item center, and justify content center again. Now, we have it in the middle, but we need to have two more lines. For that, we need to use before and after pseudo elements. Alright, so inside the bar class, I grab the before and after pseudo elements. We add a content first because it is a pseudo element and then give it a width of 100%, a height of 2 pixel, and a background color of white, just similar to the bar class itself. But now these lines are not showing, so to show these lines we need to add a position absolute. As you can see, now we have them, but they are so close to each other. Now we need to separate them one by one. So at first I grab the before element and write transform translate y and 10 pixel. Then copy and paste this element and change the before to after and write a minus before the 10 pixel. As you can see we have them all on top of each other. Now it is time to implement the functionality of this hamburger menu. So first I get right of this border. Then Inside the header component, we must have a use state hook. I'm gonna name this bar and set bar, and the initial value will be false. Now we need to pass this hook to the container div so we can have access to it in our CSS. At first, we need to target the middle line, so once we click this bar, we want the middle line to be hidden. So I just come back to the CSS and delete the white color, then add a dollar sign and curly braces. Now we need to write props, and this props is coming from the hook which we have passed before. 
then an other function and after that we set a condition. So we check if the props that bar is true. We want the background to be transparent. Otherwise, we want it to be white. Now I add an unclick to the bar class and set the initial value of the bar to not bar. And this semicolon will help the bar to toggle between true and false. So if I click the bar, notice the middle line is gone. Now we need to rotate the other two lines to form a close button. I come back to the CSS and delete the translate. Again, we get the props and set a condition. We will check if the bar is true, we want it to rotate 45 degrees. Otherwise, we want it to be just transform Y 10 pixels. I just copy and paste it to the after element and just add a minus sign to the 45 degrees so it rotates to the opposite side. Now if I click the bar, notice it's working perfectly, but we want it to work smoothly. So I just add a transition to all three elements. Now it is animating so smoothly. Once we are done with the bars, now it is time to toggle the navigation. So again under the nav div, we need to delete the zero and instead get the props and check if the bar is true, we want the height to be 100 view height. Otherwise, we want it to be zero. Now, if I click the bar, you can see the navigation is toggling. Again, we add a transition to make it work smoothly. But here we have another issue. Our bar took class in the desktop version, but we just need it in the responsive part. So I just open the CSS and grab this bar's class and add a display noun to it to delete it from the desktop part. There you go guys, we have a working navigation and it is completely responsive.